No one told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he's brought us this far. No music for a while, no music, just to leave us. My great-grandmother, Bishop Williams, would say, some through the waters, some through the floods, some through great trials, but all through the blood. Then a songwriter wrote, I knew y'all were gonna stop talking when the music stopped, but then the songwriter wrote, that is what's unfair to a preacher is they got to restart their own car after all of that. The songwriter wrote prophetic lyrics that said, I've had some good days. Now please y'all get over it. I bought some new red bottoms and they hurt tried to come celebrate with him. And I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. God knows I've had some sleepless nights. But when I look around, come on, take a look around. Because somebody's dressed up in the mess up. Some people dress their best when they're doing their worst. Y'all give me 10 minutes because I'm not fuel injected. But when I look around and I try to think things over, all of my good days, I love this front row, they outweigh my bad days. I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. And I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord. Why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Even though my weary eyes cannot see. All I want to say is thank you, Lord. I won't complain. Be seated. I want to give honor because I've got to go. I cannot prophesy to you because you told everything I was going to confirm. So thank God for everything he's done for you. And all the things he's about to do for you. Can we thank God very loud for Pastor Dr. Chris Harris? For dedicating over half of his life to misery. He meant ministry. No, I meant misery. I meant misery. Ministry for two folk who will talk to me is the only time a man gives birth. I done lost everybody in this church. You women know the travail and labor you go through carrying a child. And y'all be like, you didn't carry it. But pastors actually get pregnant. And we go through all the pain that you ladies went through carrying a real child. I am touched. That's why I need to calm down that he was gracious and integral enough to apologize to his children as an African, I don't hear about American black man. Ministry is no excuse for not being there for the kids. Trick daddy love the kids. I'm a pastor's son. Grandson. And great grandson. I know what that feeling does to someone that's a child of a chosen vessel. 
they clap for your anniversary and for all of your businesses. But you black women ain't right tonight because you ain't heard too many black men apologize and use excuses. I don't hear nobody for not executing. You're a man of God when you preach, but you prove you're a man tonight. You're a man tonight. Bishop Williams, thanks God for you, sir, tonight. Come on, let's salute him, let's honor him. To all of my colleagues, constituents, brothers and sisters, to the legend, and I know uh, it's a poor frog that don't praise his own pond, but one of the greatest people that keeps gospel music alive is Professor Ricky Dillard. Come on here. I know y'all tired of standing because of these theater seats. Cause you ain't sure if you gonna sit down and it be there. I wanna thank God for one of my sons who has a church here being with us tonight, Bishop Designate Antonio Rockmore in the powerhouse. It seems like God is getting the church ready to be pastored by a certain age group. Can I, can, can I talk to some of you? That age group is between 35 and 55. The problem y'all are going to have, now give me a little gain, not volume in these mics, please. Give me a little gain. I want to feel myself. Yeah, thank you, yeah. The only thing that I see wrong, bring the volume down a little bit, is that that age group competes. The only time they ever had power was when they got a mic. So we, and I'm not talking about you in here, but we have to pray for these new pastors who never had any real street cred Ain't never had no women running after them till they got up here with a Bible. We <laughs> now, because you sat up close, don't mean I'm going to prophesy good things, so y'all be careful. I've seen people die in friendly fire. We need to pray because... We've got prophets, Facebook prophets and internet prophets. All of them are prophesying something different as if they serve different gods. But let me say this to you as one who believes he's a prophet for over 40 years for 10 for Google Clap. I believe there's a revival on the way. And that God is going to take his church back. I don't hear nobody and it's going to be a place where blind eyes open, limbs stretch out. You don't believe it. I hope we go through, a little more out there, a three year grace period where pastors will stop licensing preachers. Just to keep members. And I hope we go through a three year period where all you women stop believing you a preacher's wife. Get a man with a job. Postal man, something. He got health insurance. I said this morning, 
to a group of people that I continue to hear three words, and those words are still resonating in me. So I'm going to say these three words without getting churchy. And if any of you feel it, you will give God praise from your own self for it. But the Lord said, before Christmas, paid in full. That's personal. Paid in full. Be seated. Who's November the 18th? Whose birthday? November the 18th. Come here. No, no. Come down there. I don't want to see you up here. Come on down here. Stay there. How are you? Good? Um, Pastor, I know it's your anniversary, but I'm going to use your hands, not mine, to touch people. Because I don't do that often. God is about to trust you with two properties. Hold on. None of these are business. These are yours. I see a hospital around you. Like a hospital. Now, if you look at me simple, I'm just going to stop prophesying because... I can either tell it to you or to La Lucretia. Who's that? No, you can sit because you're a little, you, you, you're a little cool. You're all right. God wants to give you, it's almost like a contractual business. Where you work when you want to work, go when you want to go, say what you want to say. You born in the 80s? Yeah? One, two, three. One, two, three. 83. I, I want to say something to you. When you, and that's why I brought you down here, run carefully back and forth total of three times when I tell you tell her she can pick the new house now it's hard for y'all to build one because there's no real property for like for you to build it from scratch there's really I'm sorry there's that will allow y'all to get back and forth to church and business at a reasonable time there's no property for that but we're gonna let God give you one property that's gonna pay for the other property so y'all will be landlords at the same time that your owners. You got three times to run, then you touch him, and the rest of you should clap your hands and open your mouths. That's one. That's two. That's what I tried to get y'all ready for, but y'all don't listen. Leave him. He all right when he down. I tried to give y'all play-by-play action. Be seated. What's important? Somebody as loud as you can shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if this person's watching or here. Who's Ivy? You? Brown? No. What's your last name? Butler? June the 19th? Huh? You're looking like you forgot your birthday. You talking to me? Come out. Mm -hmm. 
may not make sense to you now, Bishop. You're going to lay hands on her by walking over him. I got to say something very critical to you. And I need you to not think I'm a false prophet because if I said this in another place in space, you would refute me and look at me like I'm nosy. But God said, tell her, love will be better the second time around. <laughs> Y'all are so jealous not talking. There's a prayer warrior's uh, anointing on your life. God says, tell her as much as she does for things, she's been running from her ministry for years. You're working in ministry, but not doing your ministry. That's not the same. This, if it's up to you, because marriage is a decision. It's up to you. Because this man will not be threatened by how God uses you. This man will cause no verbal abuse. When our pastor, servant of the Lord, lays hand on her, any woman in here that has a male son or male children, God said, between now and February, I'm going to save every last one of them. And y'all ought to do it right now. All right. Somebody shout glory. I'm going to preach in about five minutes. What's your name? Yeah, you. What's your name? Jalen. How old are you? I want you to, you, ain't, you aren't going to do this, but you're going to have to get in that area and, no, no, wait till I tell you, because I want to do it, and jump as if you just got a license for a new car. Because God says if he chooses to want to go to school to do this right. God says somebody's going to pay for it full ride. Go over there and jump right now. And if Jason gets Jalen does it. Are y'all praising God for him? You may be seated. This may not make sense at all. Something crazy happened when you apologize to your children. Only you and I, I should, I, I literally asked God, could I tell you this when we hung out? He said, no. Now listen. The, the girl, the young lady, your daughter who had on black and white, who was holding a baby. A lot of your real oil was skipping and kept leaving each child because a child would get in line with God, God would transfer some of what you get, then they'd go back to what they're doing, then he'd give it to somebody else, give it to somebody else. The last one was the one with the child. She may not hear me, you may not believe it, but God says, I'm no longer asking her, I'm forcing her. God said, I need one of them who will do this right. When you apologize, her heart 
melted. From a place of, that's all she really wanted. The Lord said, I'm going to do something for her, even though the devil said it would never be done. And then I'm going to ask a hundred people to go loud. God says, I'm going to make her the happiest married person in your family. God said, every area of your life where the enemy tried to create defeat, I'm going to bring victory through your children. I shall transfer your joy, none of your pain. Y'all can be seated, I'm sorry. So was that the name I heard was Hinton? Is that H-E-N-T-O-N? Is there a Hinton in this room? Is there a Hinton in this room? You, you, your first name is Carol. She's one of your preachers? Uh, Sister Carol. Born September the 14th. God is about to give you some type of retirement. This retirement seems to be in the industry of nursing. If you know somebody between row one and three, and I know you do, text them and tell them to tell me I'm right. Because I am not Cleo. So you, that was your husband? So y'all first hit eyes in 2012. Stand up a minute. I'm about to give you a million dollar deal. Of your own. The tables you will sit at from this day forward. Will be tables that God has prepared for you in the presence of your enemies. Satan tried real good to make you believe y'all married the wrong each other. I'm glad that day is gone. Because God says, I took her through an eight-year test. I wanted to see, could she pass? Tell her, as of midnight tonight, the test is completely over. And somebody that will praise God for this sister, open your mouth and do it right. Don't get jealous that you ain't got nobody to hug. Be seated. I've been waiting for a young man to stand up at least five times. Not that he don't want to. He's been preoccupied. I wanted him. I've been looking for him five times. I have to preach now, don't have enough strength to do it. But, uh, and you that taking pictures, from the knees up, will you? <laughs> there are certain people that only get elevated after their successor dies. Elijah did not have to die for Elisha. Elisha's promotion was based upon him sticking with his successor 
until God took him up, not out. See, y'all ain't, Elijah has not died yet. For all of you who don't know the Bible, he has never seen an earthly death. But he told his successor, as long as his predecessor, as long as your soul liveth, I'm going to be there. Not looking to die. I don't even know this young man. But God said a portion of what you do, he's going to do for a living and even better at times and seasons. I'm glad to meet someone like him. I don't know him, but I don't see how God would use him and he'd been preoccupied. I, don't, I want to choose my own. But I'm going to point to this young man. He's going to get a new home. He's going to, credit is not there. He's going to get it anyway. He's going to get appointments out of nowhere. But he's going to have to run here up the steps, round the side, back down the steps carefully. The man that y'all will see in the future, if he believes it, is right there with that tie on third row. Yep, talking about you. And you got 30 seconds to do what I said. Being that your excitement was not very enthusiastic, maybe that's your personality. Because I used to act like you before God called me. I was very, I'm laid back by nature. My brothers are, they are entertainers. They do that for a living. It, me, I, I wasn't enthusiastic about it. But I'm going to put the enthusiasm, because you're not the only one who will be able to do this, in someone else and they're going to run because they need a house and they love ministry. You ready? And they're only one row behind you. Yep, you can show them how to do it. You can return to your seat. Response determines results. Will you tell someone that to the left and right of you? Response determines results. You may, you may be seated. I'm about to read my scripture. Now, let me say this. I won't ever reveal who this is. But Bishop, I'll talk to you and we can talk afterwards. Why would somebody hate on prophets and prophecy and need one? I'm talking about on this side. The question is, when he does this, I think he's a mind reader. Now let me tell you, with the gift that God has granted me to have in the office that I walk in, when I lose my keys, I cannot find them. With all I can see for you, I didn't see 30 years my first wife was not the right one. I didn't see any of this. When you're a gift to people, the gift is for people, not for yourself. So our preaching can encourage you and not change our emotions at all. But to bring clarity to the gentleman on this side between rows one and four, whoever you are. 
The Holy Ghost knows the thoughts of the people. So the Holy Ghost is a mind reader. And the intents of the heart. He says, excuse me, stand up. How old are you? Red shirt. 14. I see you looking and you're like, wow, what's going on? I was ready to go home, but this is crazy. Here's what the Lord said, because I don't want to talk to that man anymore. Here's what the Lord said. The Lord said, if she gets out on her own, when I tell her, comes up here and jumps right here 10 times, tell her she's getting over $100,000 of college tuition, she's already gone. Now I got to stay right here. And if y'all don't help her, Nikita? Who's Nikita? We should have a hundred of them, but who's Nikita? Somebody better say something, because I ain't looking for. What's your last name? And what's your middle name? So what makes you think everybody else that get a prophecy got to come down here and you get to stay up there? Now you ain't got to come. We can just go straight to preaching. You don't have to come. See, this young generation think we work for them, right? I'd be like, oh no. You can't eat in your room in my house. You got to eat at the table with the rest of us. While she's coming, hello, dear. Hello. Do you live in the suburbs yet? Would you like to go? Because while you was waiting on her to come down here, the Lord showed me five numbers to your new, new address. The Lord said, tell her they don't have the down payment, but tell her I just gave her keys. Y'all ain't telling just gave her some. See, and when one rejoice, the way that you are dressed is how you're going to become successful around the world. God said, I've given her a certain amount of style so I can feature her on television shows. Yeah, you. Because you went through so much over the years that you gave up hope. I can't believe I've been prophesying for 34 minutes. I ain't did that since Jesus was a baby. I'm going to have the women praise God for you, but even though you're different, you're going to have to get louder than them. I don't care that 12 of y'all was raised Catholic. Lady over here is like, why should I scream? If God's going to do it, just let him do it. What kind of spirit is that? I'll be right back with you. Stand up, baby. Baby, stand up. You. Yeah. How old are you? 17. You look 12. And please don't get offended. Stay young while you can.
University of Chicago? Who went there? Oh, Lord, no. You're not going to get all the prophecies tonight. I want to say to you, young lady, and who's your mother? You are? You're not happy that I called out? You sure? Tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to have you. I know you don't want to. I'm going to have you come out here, and you're going to jump over here when I tell you. You're going to jump, and you're going to tell God one-on-one, -on -one, not your mama, till after you talk to God, whether you actually want to go to school or have a trade. You're going to discuss whether you want to travel the world and showcase your gift or whether you actually want. Oh, no. Trust me. This is serious for her. Oh, serious for the mama, too, now. Because the devil thought he can make you feel stupid because of class and grades. And I guess I'm going to have to make the mama in a minute take the daughter's place and jump because your daughter's getting a breakthrough. The Lord says, and when I do what you've been trying to make her do, which is listen to succeed. God says, by March of next year, you'll be free enough to restart your life. Y'all need to, and somebody with a loud mouth ought to praise God right now. No music. This is what I want you to say to your neighbor before you sit. And I want you to say it with passion. I want you to look at the Mahashianda. Loko Takoliasa. Touch him. How old are you? When the Matuse Lekebe. When you were jumping, two things happened. You won't believe this. You're going to be a pastor on a campus. His pastoring will be so ridiculous because God said, I'm going to advance his grades. Tell him he's never going to pay a dime for school as long as he's in there. And somebody loud ought to scream as loud as you can. It's good to see a teenager thanking God like that. You may be Kalakusha. You might be, you may be seated in the presence of our God. I'm just being informed by Pastor Harris that his father was one of Chris Harris's best friends who died. Well, I know y'all ain't gonna sweep for him, but the mantle has been passed. I'm laughing, is that your son? Is that her son or something? I'm laughing because the Lord said when he's clapping, the Lord said all I had to do to get him to this point, which I didn't fully want to do, is I had to take his ability to play certain music to make him preach. Be seated. Get your Bibles. I want to show you something. But I want you to say these two words to your neighbor. And if they don't get excited, put them on time out for 20 minutes. <laughs> Even if it's your BFF or whatever, best friend. I don't care who it is. Just look at them and shout as loud as you can. You're next. <laughs> Come on, shout across the room and tell somebody you're next. Some of you 
Give me a little more gain. You have not been called out. But through the scripture, you thank you. You will be called up. Won't have to call your name because you'll see yourself in the text. I'm going to do it, Kose. I'm going to do it in the Baptist way so we can go to this golden secret party. I ain't going too many cameras. But let me give you the backdrop because all of you have heard this story. Put 30 more minutes on that timer. Because I've spent all this time prophesying. Give me some time. Hey, something's going on. Stand up. You mentioned some billionaires pay for a building. Building 29,086 square feet. I want to say something to you. There's some more land attached to this building. Somebody doesn't want to let this particular piece go. They were hoping you wouldn't get it so they can just lock in. But God said, I'm going to do something I've never did for a young black preacher. God says, tell him, count three blocks up and around. I'm giving him all of it. Y'all need to... And you have to name one street Chris Way. got the numbers mixed up. I said 29,086. It's 29,806. But BC. Let me give you the backdrop and I need 30 of you out of thousands of you to actually push me. Especially in the front. Because a quarterback can only get sacked because of his front line. Again, shout as loud as you can, paid in full. The story... Robert is about David's battle with Goliath. Look at folks, that's a kitty sermon. Hold on. At least give me a chance. And as many times as I've heard this story, I have never heard preachers literally say a few things that I discovered during my meditation. Lord, the 12 folk that talk, pay all their bills off, Lord. I just, no, no, I said 12. Don't try to ease in now. I told you response determined results, but you didn't hear me. Death and life is in the power. Closed mouths don't get fed. few things I'm going to say because I'm not going to preach it all. But I'm going to give prophetic points to the text. Professor Dillard, then we'll talk tomorrow. Things like this. I'm going to practice and see if those who receive it will get loud. This is the last time something bigger than you will have anything to say.
even though it's bigger than you and his mouth is uh, bigger than yours, the next time you hear from that certain type of bully, it'll be on their backs. Because from the back is the only place something bigger than you can look up to you from. I need a scripture. y'all. God will make your enemies. Your enemies have two options. One is make peace with you. Or become a footstool. The footstool I'm teaching already is not for you to step on them. It's for you to reach what's out of reach by stepping on them. A footstool is not something you step on. It's something you step up to reach something that's out of your range. Which means all of your help is not coming from a friend. Oh, yeah. Your help is coming from Goliath. Yep, I won't say what it is, but that third row got some spirits. Second row, too, boy. You've been looking serious all this time. I need a word. You getting it right now. And it's that same mean face that ran, that ran your baby daddy away. That same posture and disposition. Now that's row two. Take it or leave it. Whoever you are. Told folk earlier, your posture determines your possessions. Your possessions should not change your posture. Look at folk counting the rows. Who you think it is? I also would say something like this for the same 12 people who would scream. The fight you in now comes with a purse. This is not the same battle where you fight and get nothing back in return. I'm coming for you. This is not the battle that says set yourself. Stand ye still. For tomorrow, the Lord will be with you. This is not the battle that says ye shall not need to fight. This is the one that says you must fight. I would say something like this. Believe it or not, I'm a third through the sermon. I would say something like this for screamers. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh boy, y'all sound ready over here. The bigger the battle, the bigger the purse. I need God to bless me where I forget the hell that I went through. Pay me to lose my memory. Pay me. Hang in there. Hang in there. Bless me until I said I'm glad I went through what I went through. Um, I don't want to lie and you go to this church. Come here. Come here, my fine driver. Come on, man. I don't want to be a liar. I'm going to read all of my topics. That's a lot of topics for one sermon. Yes, sir. When I read them, the only way you can get excited is you have to know a little Bible and a little bit about the story to get excited over what these titles are because I have not chosen which one will be the primary topic. 